We are so excited that you're joining us to learn more about painted play spaces. Um, this has been such a fun project and I'm really thankful that I get to share some information and a quick overview with you. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm Rochelle Franz and I am an associate professor at the University of Central Oklahoma. I teach in our physical education and health education program. And a few of my students have been helping me with this project and the partnership we have here with the Oklahoma um, State Department of Education and Department of Health. So today we're gonna talk about the different phases of the Paint and Play Spaces project. So there are three phases of Paint and Play Spaces. First is the design phase. Hopefully you've already seen that PowerPoint and, and been through that resource edition there. The second phase, which I'll talk to you about today is the preparation phase. And the third phase is the implementation phase. And you'll also be able to find resources to tell you more about that after we finish up here. So we've developed this um, training and supporting documents to assist with all three of these different phases. And we'll talk through those with each of the, with each of the phases that we, we lead you through. So let's talk about the preparation phase. The very first thing you'll wanna do um, is assess your area, right? And so we've created a playground assessment and planning toolkit. And this is really just to help you do the front end work um, and get, get prepared for the big day where you're gonna paint these play, play spaces at your school or your location. So this phase has two components. One is the timeline and to organize the painting event. And then the second major part and really important part is how to paint the stencils. So you may be wondering like, what, what are we talking about? What is the stencils? Well, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that um, as we move forward with the training. So let's first touch base with the timeline to organize your event. So this timeline provides guidance. Again, you may find some things that work differently for your specific school or organization, um, but we can give you some tips and tricks and things that we've learned along the way. So we'll talk a little bit, this will share, share with you more information about ordering and organizing paint and supplies, and also recruiting and organizing volunteers. So important as volunteers, right? You want lots of hands and lots of um, workers the day of the event. So organizing that ahead of time will ensure success on your actual paint day. So attending to considerations in the timeline will also be really critical to make sure that this is, is a successful and complete project. Let's talk about six to two months prior to your paint event. All right, the first thing you wanna do is obtain permission from the principal or who whoever your school administrator or administrator is for the project. It's a great idea to get everyone on the same page so that you know um, what the event will look like, when you'll organize the event and also have that, that leadership um, in your school. The second thing I wanna do is contact OSDE to reserve a set of stencils or you can purchase the stencils, but we will have two different sets of stencils that you may check out and borrow um, will be very cost effective for you if you're not looking to keep these stencils or use them again and again. And then you're going to complete the design phase of the project. Like I said, there's another uh, resource that you can walk through um, about the design phase, which will really help you plan out what you want your space to look like. Um, that will that will help you as you know how much paint to order, the supplies that you need and things like that. Then you're gonna to need to order the paint from a hardware store. Um, you'll want to make sure that you use paint that's suitable for the concrete or pavement and they can help you whatever store you decide to, but just make sure that they know this is going outside on either um, concrete or pavement. And then you'll use the paint square footage table in the select the activities section um, to calculate how much paint to buy. So that we've done all of that pre-work for you. So you don't have to look and figure out, oh, this, this is stencil covers this many square feet. And what do I do? Once you know the stencils you're using and the square footage of the paint you'll need, then there is a quick little way you can figure out how much of each color of paint that you'll need. Um, the next thing is you'll want to either use, find your power washer, or borrow one um, to prepare 
the paint space, that, um, the outside area that you'll be using. And then one month prior to the paint event, the, again, a really important part of making this a success is to secure a list of volunteers. In the schools that we've already completed the project, we found that about 20 volunteers is ideal. Obviously, if you have fewer, you can make it work. It may take a little bit longer, but we, we found that 20 is a really great number um, for a three to four hour painting event and that sort of thing. The next thing is you'll wanna buy your paint supplies. So these are just, this is just a list of paint supplies that we found that you'll need and use. Um, you can see that here from paint brushes to the rollers. Uh, we bought, we purchased uh, small rollers and then larger rollers to use on the stencils. And we found those work really great um, as you just put the stencils down for the first coat. The paint brushes also help in some of those smaller areas and for some touch-ups if, if needed. Um, the canvas drop cloth is really important for your kind of organization area where you'll lay out all the different paint and the supplies. And we kind of made that drop cloth our home base. And so that's nice. So everyone knows, okay, come here, pour the paint in your tray liner here versus taking the paint all over your area and having to track people down when you need it. And then the last thing you'll want some painters tape or duct tape. Another thing that I might mention right here that we found would be great is just to have um, a few extra large trash bags on hand and maybe even some disposable gloves. And then one week prior to the paint event. So first of all, you're gonna prepare the surface to paint. It's so important that the surface is clean, right? Because the paint will not lay nicely. It won't stick and adhere to anything that's dirt. Wow, so we live in Oklahoma um, where there's lots of different weather and a lot of wind. So we suggest preparing maybe a week prior, but then the day before the paint event, go back, make sure that you're sweeping. Um, you may want to even get a leaf blower and you can power wash then, but it's really important that if you power wash 24 hours before that you give that surface plenty of time to dry so that you're not also working with a wet or damp surface as you start to paint. Um, the other thing that's really important is identifying kind of your paint station and that you have that near a water source. So if you're at the school, obviously you'll want to obtain a, a water key from the principal or whoever um, has access to that. Um, so you will be able to wash out the paintbrushes and clean up after you're finished. So you also want to make a, a sign-in sheet for volunteers. Uh, that can be whatever you lo it looks like. Some of the projects we've done, we have assigned certain volunteers to specific stencils and paint areas. Other times we just let the people volunteer for what sounds fun for them. Both have worked out as long as you know, um, for instance, if you're gonna paint the basketball stencil, that's gonna take four to five people. So as long as you are prepared with that, then it might work to have people volunteer as they get to the event. That's just up to you and what, what works best. Um, another thing that will really be helpful is making copies of the layout map and the instructions for the stencils. Both of those things are provided in the resources that you can find here um, and then and make copies so that everyone can have a, a layout of the map and what their stencil actually looks like and step-by-step -step instructions for how to lay the stencils and paint the stencils. Then the next thing you'll do is either assign volunteers or let them choose the stencils that they'll want. We also have um, task sheets. So that is provided as a resource and that just gives the volunteers a step-by-step -step instructions of how do we com complete our project. Another suggestion, suggestion is to use milk crates. That is just a great way to organize your clean brushes and even the dirty brushes, just stick them in there so they're not laying all over the drop cloth or other areas. And then use the shopping bags um, those plastic baggies to wrap up the paint brushes or rollers between uses. So we've found that maybe a group finishes painting the basketball stencil and they used yellow and they can wrap those brushes and rollers up really tightly. So someone else who might be using the agility ladder that is, a, is painting a green but might need yellow later, they can go back and use that same yellow paintbrush and roller. Um, the other thing is to take some before photographs. Once you've cleaned the area, take some really great photographs of your paint, of your space before it's painted. 
And then the day of the event, set up a check-in table where you have your sign-in sheet. We also suggest maybe grabbing some snacks, some waters, some healthy snacks, obviously, um, and things that your volunteers may need throughout the day. And you can set up your paint station before your volunteers arrive. So have everything out and organized. So as your volunteers arrive, you can have a really quick um, you know, explanation of the event and sharing your thoughts and your ideas, and then everyone can get to work really quickly. And then turn on the water with the key. Obviously, um, you can use a hose with the spray nozzle to wash out the brushes as needed at the day of the event. The other thing is you'll see, this is just a picture here of what we, of what it looks like for us, but just organize the paint containers, open the lids, you may stir up the paint and you can keep organized the clean and dirty brushes along with any type of, you know, rags that you may have or the paint liners and the trays and that sort of thing. And so then you'll hand out um, task sheets, instruction sheets, and we put those kind of, we just would paper clip them together so that as the volunteers began their project, we could hand them one kind of a little booklet of a couple of sheets. It's a good idea, um, again, because it may be windy to use some type of a clipboard or something where the papers won't fly away. Um, but then you know, just remind volunteers to sweep the game area or use again, a leaf blower, blower to dry to clear off that area right before they paint. Um, make sure that you have some brooms available. And then the other thing that really helps the day of the paint event is to make sure that one person is overseeing the project. So if there are questions about stencils or if there are questions about specific areas that someone is, the, the everyone knows who the go-to person is about where things should go. The stencils need to be washed off before everyone leaves. So again, we found that really assigning a group of people to one stencil and area makes that pretty easy because as they're finished, they can go to the pit to the water area, to water station, they can clean off their stencil, clean out their paint brushes and let everything dry out before they're ready to leave. Um, and then obviously make sure that when you're finished, if you have leftover paint, you secure the lids tightly with the each, each type of paint. Then the fun part, take some after photographs. Once you complete everything, it's a great idea just to get that final um, look of the playground of what you've accomplished that day. So how to paint the stencils. Um, there will be specific instructions that you can print out for those, for your volunteers and people on the day of, of your event. But it's really important to know you're gonna take the paint, the paint brushes and the stencils from that paint station area, right? You'll carry your supplies to your assigned area. This goes back to having that point person um, so that you can make sure just to verify, are we in the correct place? Again, sometimes it works out, it works best to lay out the stencils as a whole group, but oftentimes you'll be using one stencil in one area and taking that same stencil to a different area to use it. So that may not be ideal. Um, make sure the surface is clean, right? I think I've said that a couple of times, but if you need a sweep again, do that, but everything needs to be completely clean before you start painting. And then obviously use a brush and a roller um, for each color. We found that sharing those brushes and rollers worked out really well because if we had red, one group may be painting blue on their stencil while someone else is using the red paint and then they can switch if they need to. Um, the other thing about painting the stencils is less paint is best. And that seems a little bit odd, right? When you're painting concrete or pavement, but it really, really helps in to get the paint on smoothly and allow it so it doesn't um, smudge or run underneath the stencil. So a dabbing action with the paintbrush is a great idea. And even just a really thin layer with the rollers also works. And we found that you can, you know, paint or roll the paint on pretty thin and then get in wait a few minutes and maybe give it a second quick coat if needed. So you're going to lay the stencils down in the play area and then obviously use the correct paint colors for the game's designs. You'll notice that the stencils come in, in some of the stencils that are larger at least 
come in different um, sheets. So this one that you're looking at is the basketball stencil. It doesn't just roll out into the basketball area, right? So it has four or five separate sheets. So to be real honest, it takes a little bit of work just to put the stencil down. I've always told people that the stencil laying is pretty much the most difficult. The painting is really quick and easy, but you'll want a few volunteers, um, especially because again, there may be some wind and those stencils like to come up. We also found that it might be good to have some small bricks or some type of a weight. So when the stencils are in, in the correct location, you can set something there and keep those um, in that area as you begin to paint. So touch-ups, after 15 to 30 minutes after the first coat, you can look at touching up or maybe you know, something smudged, you can correct that. Hopefully you won't have a lot of touch-ups, but it certainly is likely to happen. So it's best to wait 15 to 30 minutes after that first coat. Again, allowing dry time is really important before you move the stencil and knowing that some of those stencils will need to be um, picked up and moved with a team of volunteers. So not just one person, because if there's wet paint on the stencil or on the pavement, you definitely don't want to smear or smudge that. So you'll need some help lifting the stencil up out of the area. Um, at the end of the day, take all the supplies back to the paint station. Everything needs to be cleaned before the volunteers leave. And that's a great fun project as everyone's finishing up. It doesn't take long if everybody jumps in and helps. And then again, make sure that the paint cans and the lids are secured and ready to move. So the, the preparation phase is really just getting things organized, but the next phase, you can learn about the implementation phase. And that's really where you make everything work with the games and where, where the kids and the students get to have some fun. So you'll learn more about the recess games once the area is painted and ready to go. And you'll be able to see um, the finished project of the paint and play spaces with all of the bright, colorful painted recess games. So that's the end of our, of our slideshow. Um, I would just encourage you to use the resources that we've developed. They're extremely helpful. And as you're looking forward to this event, you may be coming to this already um, committed to paint and play spaces. And I would encourage you stick with it. We've seen already some of the schools that we partner with that we've they've sent photos with students um, playing. And it's so fun to see those kids with the big smiles and something new and fun and um, such a great partnership and a great project for your school and community volunteers to work with. So join us for the next phase, um, the implementation phase, and I hope that you have a great time. Thanks so much for joining us today.